All right, so how many people here have done test-driven development before? Okay. How many people here have done testing at all? Okay, so we're still not got everybody's hands yet. Um, all right, so who enjoys, this is going to be a problem, who enjoys writing code? Or at least at one time has enjoyed writing code. <laughs> Even if they were like 10 years old. Okay, remember back, everybody's hands I want to see up. You enjoyed writing code? Okay, you never enjoyed writing code? Okay, all right. All right, so on the other hand, who enjoys playing games? And my wife's like, I don't like video games. Well, she's good at Scrabble. So if you like Scrabble, video games, um, whatever, football, I want to see that hand up. Okay. For me, test-driven development is like my first coding experience and like playing games. That's why I like it. You don't have to like it for the same reasons, but that's why I like it. All right. I am Jean Johansson. I'm Jean Johansson, this is Jeff Grover, and this is Richard Thompson. Okay. We are presenting, and they get, I get to do the talking, and they get to do the coding. So. All right. We were at uh, XP Utah last two weeks ago or no, sorry, SL Agile two weeks ago, and I asked the question, well, I didn't ask the question, John Major asked the question. John Major said to me, he said, as I'm preparing, I said, I got a TDD course we're giving, and John Major said, well, let's ask around the room, when did you become test infected? So we went around the room, asked everybody. And some of the statements, one, of, one that particularly struck me was somebody said, when my project, when, when I delivered on my project and there were no bugs. Okay, that one struck me, because I've been there, done that. I like that. It was a four-month project for them. Uh, another reason I like it, I said, when, I, when I asked the same thing with Jeff, Jeff said, when I can be proud of my code. I mean, how many people have pushed out code that they're actually proud of? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. How many people are confident there aren't bugs? Who attended um, Christian session? Were you in Christian session? Who actually believed that his refactor would work? Okay, so three of you, and you guys do test first, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's amazing. It looks like I've got the test, I refactored it, it worked. All right, so that's some of the reasons. And I don't want to, this, court, this session is not about convincing you. It's, it's, got, it's got me excited. I want to get to the coding as fast as possible. All right, so let's talk about a little bit about what the metaphor is, red-green refactor. You've heard that before? Yeah. What does that mean? Exactly. It's exactly like the duct tape TV show. Richard was like trying to get me to put a slide in there, and I keep fighting him, luckily. Yeah. Duct tape. Red, green, the reason I put this slide up here is I'm going to bang on a table. So the rhythm of red, green, we always forget it. It goes red, green, refactor. That sounds like red, green. It goes red, green. OK, red, green, refactor. OK, what are you catching there? The time, yeah. What, how, when do we, how much time do we spend red and how much time do we spend green? Red, red, green, red, green, red, green. Refactor. So we do all our refactoring in green. Exactly. So one thing that happened to me, I, I had the blessed experience of not having read the test driven development book when I started. I had the blessed, I started XP before there was an XP book. I was reading Ward's Wiki. That's how I got started. So I got to make every mistake in the book. And the, one of the biggest mistakes that bothers me is I coded so much code in the red. So I wrote my test first, nice, big, complicated test. 
and then I was writing, trying to solve it, and then I'm getting trying to solve it, run the test still red, run the test still red. And then finally, it's green. And I go quickly write another test, turn it back red again, and at the end of the day, I'm like, ah, I feel awful. Then Kent Beck's book came out. You've seen it. Um, I'm going to need it. It's uh, that box out there in front of the wheelchair. So Kent Beck's book came out. And if you haven't read that, that for me was eye-opener because he said, red, green, fast, refactor. And then I changed it, and suddenly I am here. I'm happy. So, so for my psyche, it was better to re it was just change that little bit. It wasn't much that I was doing. And there's another one, too. The one that was on it or, or behind it? Open the lid. Oh, you got it all. OK. There's also the toys. All right, so this is Kent's book. Okay. This is the test-driven development book. OK. All right, that's enough. I'm done talking about it. Ask me later if you want to know more details. Thanks. All right, so we're going to do some exercises. And since not everybody in the room still codes, OK, I'm looking at one of you. And I've organized it so that um, when I do this, not everybody actually can. Not everybody actually codes. And, and we go really fast. So as you start to fall apart, we've got some roles that will help those that are behind. So we're going to talk about a driver. So if you've done, if you know about extreme programming, you know pairing is often divided up into two people. One's called the driver. Or in my case, I call it the dog. The person that sits next to him is called the the navigator. Excellent, the navigator. And I don't like this navigator. I don't like to be yelled at when I'm programming. So I chose a a little calmer navigator. So our navigator is going to be the baby. So we got the dog and the baby. So one of you is going to be driving, programming. Another one is going to be sitting there, keeping the high-level picture, talking to your pair, helping them out when they need it, OK, as we code. We've got two more roles in your pairing that are for this, just for this conference, geared for the people that don't want, really want to code, don't even want to sit in front of the monitor and pretend to code. So this is. The questioner. Is that you said that? The question. The questioner. Yeah, excellent. So we got a questioner, which I call the arm. And our final person is. Who knows who that is? Hot Rod Hundley. And what does he do? He's an announcer or a commentator. Okay. So so our four roles are the the dog, the baby, the arm, and the old man. <laughs> Or the hot rod, however you want to look at it. The hot rod is going to talk. The hot rod is going to talk. So I'm going to be standing back here while this guy's programming, and I'm going to talk. And I'm going to talk to the arm. And we're going to talk about his coding. They're going to try to ignore me. Hopefully they will. And they're just going to code along. And I'm going to point out little things I notice. The questioner is going to go, but what is that? And the commentator is going to go, well, that's, what, that's, a, that's a test. That's a setup. That's this. That's that. That's why. Your success depends on those people that are standing behind you at your table. All right, so that's it. We're going to get started. Jeff has a presentation, and Richard and I, and we need a volunteer. Uh, Jeff needs a pair. Jeff needs a baby. I need a baby, and I need a baby out of the audience. Thank you very much. A Java we're programming in is Java the language. To Java. OK, on the back, all the way back. All right, so we've got, we've got the dog, we've got the baby. Richard is going to, I'm going to be the arm, and Richard is going to be the commentator. You're going to be the old man. <laughs> All right, so Jeff, if you can uh, saddle up to Jeff and help him out with the Java. Right here we can see his laptop. Yeah. 
So Richard, I don't. Yeah. No, you're actually start talking. You're hot rod. All right. We we can look we can look up the big screen. Yeah. So what are we going to be doing? What are we going to be seeing? I know what we're going to see first. The test, and then they're going to write code to satisfy the test. Wow. We're doing test first. So is that a, is that? We can't see the left side of your screen. Just slide it. Can we all see the code? Did I just? Uh, so he's writing a test class. Oh, okay, that's cool. So what's he's that? He's organizing his tests into classes. What's that case. at? What's that at test thing? Uh, it looks like an attribute saying that this method is a test case. So why did he write fail me first? Because uh, first he's getting a red test. He's going to make a failing test first, and then he's going to get it green. So he's going to do red green. So tell me about assert true. Uh, He's uh, using a test framework that provides a series of assertions. And when the assertions are false, then your test is red. And when your assertions are all passed, then your test is green. So he's importing a reference to the test framework. And assert true is coming from the test framework. And it's going to pass if the argument is evaluated to true. Now he's got a red test. So is that red bar down there? That's the That was the failure? That's, that's the red. OK. And now we're getting green. Oh, wow, that was fast. He went from red to green pretty fast. That's the way it should be. But it, it doesn't look like he's doing anything. He hasn't done anything. It's baby steps. You do the thing one step at a time, go red to green really fast, and then once you're green, then you can refactor and improve the implementation. Looks like he's writing a test for something that's going to parse the URL. So he doesn't have a class yet. He's, he's making up, he's telling himself a story of, if I had the perfect class, Everything I wanted to do, what would it look like? So now he's writing the ideal story of what this class would do if he had one, and now he's going to go make one in order to get it to compile. So now he's off in the production code, bouncing back and forth between the test and the production code to get the production code to be implemented far enough to get this test to compile and go red. So he's it's still green. Well, he went from, it looks like he, 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 so he's trying to, uh, I'm not sure what this test is supposed to be saying because it says fail me. <laughs> so I, I don't know what we're trying to prove with this test yet. <laughs> this is what the, this is what the, the baby's supposed to catch. Ah, oh, so now I know what he's testing. Ah, oh, OK. Oh. So this test is going to tell us how a protocol can be parsed from a URL. And that's what URL parser's job is going to be. Ah, so now he's getting into the actual usage of the class more than just making one and not having it do anything. He's saying that when we call get protocol on the parser with that URL, we ought to get back HTTP. So did he just write the, te the method that he was going to implement in the test first? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the way you do it. Really? That's interesting. You tell yourself the story of what the ideal code would look like. Then you go and write the code to satisfy that story. That's, that's how you get perfect objects every time. That's so bizarre. OK. I'll, I'll let it go. I'm still confused, but I'm, I'm, stay, I'm trying to stay with it. We're making the object do what we want because we're saying what we want first. OK. So now he's off implementing his constructor. That, that return empty string, that's not going to do anything. That's right. But we need our test red before we can get it to go green. Now our test is red. Oh, OK. I got that. So now we're red. Now he's going to 
and make it green. But that's just hard coding it. Yeah. Really? But we build up the behavior that we want by specifying one test case at a time, and we incrementally build the behavior. We don't go and build the final implementation just to satisfy this one simple case. What if we never needed to do any protocol parsing other than HTTP? That would be good enough. We would not have over-engineered it. Really? But yeah, I want we always build to just enough code for what we need. But I want to build more. Write more tests. I can do that. Write more value for your customer. It's nothing wrong with making more. It's making that more useful to the customer. Oh, he's already got the next test. While I was looking, while I was looking away, got the next test. Because now he's doing down. the test that the host can be parsed from the URL. He doesn't have a get host name yet. satisfies all the tests we've written so far. The question is, do you have enough tests to cover everything that this object needs to do? If this object never needs to do anything more than parse HTTP protocol URLs from Google.com, then this is just the right amount of code. Do you know what that's called when he's doing that? When he's doing what? When he is like writing tests to force to force the uh, triangulation. Triangulation is called? Yeah, that's where you're, you're, you're pinning down the behavior of the objects that you want and locking it all in. When's he going to write real code? <laughs> this is all real code. <laughs> this real code we're looking at here is your safety net. This is what's going to give us the confidence that when we make changes next year on this class, that we didn't break all the stuff we wrote this year. So why is this important? Yeah, so why is this important? I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> How many people here have worked on code other people wrote? That's why it's important. <laughs> Looks like we got a we got some problems in our syntactic error in our test here. Where would we be without IntelliJ? In Eclipse. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you using IntelliJ, Jeff? I am I'm using IntelliJ. Yes. Or it is using me. All right, we can't talk. But one of the rules is you don't talk to the coder. <laughs> that that would be way too distracting for the coder. It's bad enough that we're talking about him. When we start talking to him, it's, it, it falls apart. So that, try to keep that boundary as you're talking behind the people that are. Okay, so he's got another red test. He's uh, now, now we're getting into more than just hard coding it because you can't return the hard coded HTTP and have it work for both FTP and HTTP. So now he's got to go in and incrementally enhance the implementation to satisfy the existing tests. And because we wrote that earlier test for HTTP, we know that the code that we're writing now that's handling a more realistic case is going to work for both. He had to store a little bit of state now because he can't just fake it by returning static strings. He's got to actually remember the stuff that was passed into the constructor and do something with it. And now he's green. Wow, so now, now he's got the HTTP case and the FTP case working and the host name part, it didn't get affected, so it's still working as well. Now he's getting ready to write his next test case. Or he's going to try and do some refactoring. So he's green? He's green. So now he can make changes you know, with confidence, knowing that he's not breaking any of the behavior as long as the code is, as long as all the tests are still green after the change. 
So it looks like he's getting ready to factor out some duplication between these test cases. Each one of them is creating a parser object in the same way. a little helper method in his test class that the duplication is, is extracted out into the helper and then he's going to use the helper in the test cases. Why would he want to get rid of that duplication? Duplication, duplicated code is always a source of errors because you change one and then you got to go change all the in, other instances of it. So if we can extract out the duplication, we can reduce the likelihood that we are introducing mistakes when we make a change. I've seen that. I've seen duplication create bugs. Yeah, how many of us have worked on code that other people wrote? <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> how many of us have worked on code where somebody's idea of code reuse was copy and paste? You felt the pain of duplication. Yes, sir. Okay, so he's got that test case using his extracted method. So it just what happened? It just went red. So I he think did, he's trying to figure that out. He did a, he did a refactor inside his test case that caused it to go red. I'm a little baffled by that, and it, it looks like it looks like he's baffled by that too. It means he's made a change that you know has now caused the test case to fail. So. You could either back out and go back to green, or you can make, you know, adjust this to get this code to be working again. Where does it show which test failed? It's down in the, in the stack trace. I see that it shows the fail image. I just don't see what it says. It's underneath. Yeah, yeah. You have to scroll down. If you expand that tree, we'll just show you the number too. Yeah, and the different test frameworks are different, so yeah. this one just happens to be the Java test framework, how it does it. <coughs> it looks like he's a little bit lost right now. Uh, yeah, that navigator, maybe we need to change that baby into the screaming the woman. Screaming woman. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now he's really flailing around. He's wandered off with the production code. So 
now it looks like he's adding new functionality, but we're not red. Am I adding new functionality? He's refactoring under the green bar. It looks like he's uh, That looked like an enhancement to me. <laughs> new behavior that isn't covered by tests. Actually, it is. It looks like it is to me. It's, well, like you get host name. It's covered by one test. He's just re Doesn't it look like he's re implementing? See, now he changed the implementation and it's red. Oh. Wait, but that, was that intended? No. I think he just typoed. No, I think he's uh, trying to figure out the right incantation to get the test to be green again. Okay, now we're green again. But we were green before, even when we were turning that static string. So for the tests we have, the static string was covering all the behavior for the tests that we had. We, if we had written a uh, new test asserting on the host name to be something different, then we would have required that information. Is that a test that you would write? Probably. Okay. I, would, I might not, but... I, I would probably have uh, written a test that would force me to go and do that implementation in response to the test, rather than anticipating the implementation before the test strictly called for it. Okay. One of the things that you're seeing is particular styles. So as you do, we see, we're, we're seeing Jeff's style. You're going to hear what my style is, and you'll get to see Richard's style a little later, and you'll get to see your, each other's styles. Okay, you want to learn from that. And when you see a new style, think about it and say, which one of those do I want to try? And try it. Was actually adding new functionality because there wasn't a test that would cover that. Somebody could come in and change that to be google.com to return just that string, and there's no test to cover that case. Um, but somebody could be using that for a different URL, and you don't know, and hence you introduce a bug. So now it looks like he's adding, he's got a red test for getting the port number out of the URL string, and he's trying to get that to go green. We saw, so we saw it red, did you see it red? I'm seeing red up there. Yeah, it's red. He's trying to get to green. And he put that empty string in there. That no, he, could, he, could, he could have faked it out with a 443 string. But having done that rhythm of faking it out with a static string, and now he's already storing the URL, he's going straight towards the implementation that will satisfy the test to go green. So this is different from triangulation. Yes. <clears throat> If you wanted to do a triangulation style, you would write just returning 443 for that first test, and then you'd write another test, and then that would triangulate down into the arbitrary port number. So now he's got the port number functionality locked in. Green looks like he's going to do a little refactoring on his production class. He's noticed that he's got these splits with the bracket, zero bracket, you know, littering his code, so he's going to do some pre processing work in the constructor. This is my guess. He's gonna do, looks like he's going to do some pre processing work in the constructor and then just return the results of that work for those getters. Wow, that's cool that you can see that. So he's noticed he's got this repeated code, url.split, colon. So he's taking care of that in the constructor and then reusing that to eliminate the duplication. And now he's going to run his tests, and if they're all green, then that refactoring did not change any of the behavior. So he has confidence that the change he made <coughs> did not break any of the functionality that he's worked so hard to create. All right. You know how hard it is.
So you don't know, can you, can you there you go. So you don't know how hard it is to actually, so there were two things that were hard there. All right. Programming in front of an audience. Programming in front of an audience. That's one. Then programming in front of Richard and us talking about it. You get to experience this yourself. And you get to experience your, this soon, but not quite yet. But while, but while we, um, we're about to program, and I don't care if you do this in pairs or if you do this one, we're going to actually step you through it. All right? We're going to do one of Bob Martin's katas, and we're going to take you right through it, and we want you to follow along. All right, I've got in this box, I've got these red and green stickers. All right? So the table that finishes first, that hasn't got their red and green stickers for their badge, gets red and green stickers. OK? So it's you're responsible for your table. That means everybody who's coding at your table, this is why the success or failure depends on your table, is dependent on every single person having that step done at your table. All right, so just so you know, all right, so, thank you. This is what Jeff did. He managed to take an obelisk and break it into its component parts. Oh, an astrolabe, thank you. All right, so this part says, get your computer out and get it ready to go. That means if you don't have your test framework up and ready to go, you might be behind. All right, so what we're going to work on. We are going to do prime numbers. All right, we're going to do. We're going to find all the prime factors, and you pass it a particular number, and all the prime. We're going to return an array of all the prime factors. Now you'll notice that there's some non-primes in here. What are they? One is not prime. Eight is not prime, and you notice one is a weird. One is a weird color, and eight is knocked down. Or is that infinity? Is infinity prime? <laughs> Not computable. <laughs> OK. All right, so everybody's got your laptop out and your IDE up, and I want test one written. I want a failing test to be written. See that little red dot up in the right-hand corner? So again, this is go. This is go time. Stickers are on the line. Stickers for the badge are on the line. This is written in pseudocode. And having Richard at your table is like, like cheating. <laughs> so, instead, so instead, I'm going to make him walk around. So call out. So let me know as soon as your IDE's up. So I want to see a class. Who's got the class written? Class prime factors. Have you got the class prime factors? Can you call it that? Yeah, please. That'd be great. Just refactor the name. You've got one person coding here. I see two laptops. That's all right. What, which one of the two languages? That's good. It's better if you do it. As many people, if you do this one, the next exercises we won't have to do, but try to do this one together or separate as much as possible. Are you not doing it? Okay. All right, can I push the button? I'm pushing the button. Okay, so we should now have one class and one test inside that class. That test should be called one has no factors or something like that. Okay, who's got that? 
because we're stickers on the line. The first table to get that done, I want to see those hands up. You guys done? That table's done. And you've got and it's been stubbed with an assert fault. Yeah. And it's and it's failing. And the test is failing. Okay? That's what I want to see. You guys ready? They guys were close. I'm walking stickers over there unless somebody stops me. These guys are close. They're very close. Has everybody got it? Wait. Wait, who are you pairing with? Can I kick you onto a table that's not programming or pairing? Sorry, guys. Here we go. All right, stickers for your badge. These guys are first. Red and green, both. You want red and green? You want both red and green on your badge? That'd be cool. That's it. Only one table gets it at a time. Oh, it's first one gets it. First one gets it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So how are we gonna? What are we gonna do next? What does this tell us? What has this just told us? What do you now know? Are you are you guys done now? Anybody not done? We'll send two helpers over. Jeff, can you make them done? What does that tell us? Our testing framework works. That's all this tells us. And why do I do this? What? Last week, okay, just last week, I was programming along, writing my tests, writing my code, and I didn't see the red first, so I'm writing code, and it's green, and then it's green again, and then it's green again, and then it's green again, and about three tests into it, I realize I'm testing the wrong framework. Go! Oh! And, and then, I, then I hook it up right and actually run it, and all three of my tests are busted. That is not a pleasant thing to have happen. You learn from my mistake, don't do that. Okay, so run the test. Make sure your test framework is working against the right thing. All right, so that's cool. Jeff, are we, are they done? Okay, so what we're going to do is take that test. We don't care about that test anymore, and we're going to make that test real. All right. So replace the assert faults with assert the empty list. So this is an empty list. And assert that the prime factors dot generate is 1. Yeah, we've made it a static class here. Okay, so we're about to make your test, your failing test, work. Okay, so tell me, somebody tell me what that next slide's going to have on it when I push the button. And what is, what is the implementation going to be? Not return true. Return and empty array. Empty array. Bottom B, that's it. It's so simple. There's a straight case. If you write on what you need to do to get it to pass. Okay, again, stickers on the line. This should just be really easy. Come on, who's first? Both of them are done it? We could have broke it. The computer shot, so now everything on the Oh, come on. I was trying to work an object pretty well. Uh-huh. All right, I'm, I'm moving on. Hopefully you can catch those who are behind, a little bit behind can catch up. What test 
All right, so somebody tell me what this test is going to look like. No, it's not going to fail. It's going to fail, yes. You're right about that. <laughs> but what is it going to look like? What is the failing test going to look like? We're going to say assert something. We're going to search something. What's, what are we going to assert? We're going to, the length of the zero, well, I'm not going to write that. I'm going to return, what am I going to write? I'm going to write two, how many factors does two have? And what is it? Two. So what are you going to see? A list containing two. That's what you're going to see. Let's see if we were right. Oh, that's what we were right. And what's, it, what's going to happen when I run it? It will fail. OK. All right, stickers are on the line. Let's go. Let's get this one done. This should be fast. This should be very fast, because this is the second time through. Again, it's your, it's your team. It's your team. First, and then help the others. That's how we win. Okay, so I'm moving. I, we're about to make a pass. What's the pass going to predict what the pass is going to be? If num is 2, bada bing, bada boom. Did anybody predict that? <laughs> All right, stickers are on the line again. Come on, go, go, go. But your team, it's your team, it's not just you. Our next test is a duck. My bad. All right, so test three has one factor. What's the assert going to be? Somebody tell me the assert. Not the same guy that's been back there telling me all the answers, and not Richard, because he knows. Somebody, what's the assert going to look like? Do we want Richard to answer? Come on, silence. Assert. Go ahead, Richard. Okay, that's actually the array is going to contain. Oh, come on, but you know what I'm doing. Yes, yes. That was pretty easy to predict. Okay, I want you to predict the next one, all right, when we do the next one. Is that going to pass or fail? It better fail. All right, have we got, so stickers, we've got one team, somebody, one team left, and they're going to be first. No, we got two. One team. Okay, there's two teams. Programming these days, that makes this makes a good exercise because you actually do have to think. All right, are we done? I want to get to the next. I want to make it green. We've been red way too long. Yes, thank you. There's your implementation. All right, now here's a chance to get your stickers. There's two tables without them. That's a quick implementation. That's very quick. Quick, quick, quick. How hard is that? Ah, oh, nuts. They beat you. And these guys. Who turned, the, who turned my laptop around? That's beautiful. OK, are we ready to go on? So tell me what the next test is going to be. If we've done one has, we've done one, two, we've done three, what's the fourth one going to be? What's our fourth test going to be? We're not going to throw an exception at all. Four. Four. Four has how many factors? Two factors. Two factors. Two and two. Two and two. 
All right? So what's the assert going to look like? Somebody's going to say it. I know one guy already knows. I know two guys already know. But you were going to say it. Somebody's going to say it. Yes. I'm done with one assert. Stickers on the line. Let's see if you guys can get this. There's two groups left. <laughs> yes, exactly. I hate Microsoft bashing. No, it's just, it is what it is. Okay. You can't do it in a single assert. Yeah. Yeah, you can. I would actually write the assert. You could assert. write your own. I would. Assert. That's what I would do. And then, like, like, steal them and help those guys get their, their stickers. All right, let's go to the next one. How are we going to make this pass? Making this pass is hard. I'll bet it's a one word change. Yeah, I'll bet it's not a one word change. You were right with the mod. See, bada bing, we got somebody predicting the mods in there. All right, so, all right, you guys are going. You guys are trying to get the stickers. It's just an implementation. Your instructions are, steal this code. <laughs> <laughs> try, to beat that, try to beat these other tables. These other tables are going to come help you. That's one, that's one of the stories I'm going to tell if we get time. So are we done? I am. So has anybody had trouble putting this in? Okay, so I got a question. What, we just had a question over here. Can you say it again? Can I, can I get everybody's attention? What was your question? So I asked them, let's kind of talk about it a little bit. At what point do you try and shoot? Because we all knew the first solution, the algorithm wasn't going to be our end all solution, right? We knew that wasn't going to work. At what point do you ever try and write the end algorithm first? And then that, and then we will kind of do this like so solution, but. I responded with, what's my next test? Somebody tell me my next test. Five. Is five going to pass? Or is it going to fail? Yeah, five looks just like two. It's so obvious, but it took some thinking. If you don't know, then you write test five. It turns out. Sorry, turns out it's pretty obvious that if I wrote five, it would pass. So I, I, I wouldn't write that. Much. I know the whole thing is like a limited amount of time. Is this the people who haven't done it too much? I actually did this. We, I already had this Bob Marlon thing. And we actually went up, I actually went for like 13. And I was just putting in all these. If it's four, then return two and two. If it's five, return. And then once I get to like 13, I was like, OK, this has to end sometime. But I started looking at it, I was like, you know what, if I just do a mod, that's basically what it, And so then this just kind of emerged. Like, when this popped up here, I think there might be some people who are like, I don't know how you really came up with that. My point is, if you have some time, I know we don't have too much time to But this stuff will just kind of appear. It'll emerge, and it's, it's totally cool. And it wouldn't have happened if I would if I wouldn't have done test-driven design. So that's a vacuum in your OK. Um, Exactly. That what he did was triangulation. What Bob Martin's doing here, since Bob Martin knows primes, he writes a prime thing every two or three weeks. Since Bob Martin knows primes, he's just doing the simple, the obvious implementation, the obvious next step, and that's what we're doing. So the question is five. Does everybody convince that if I ran, if I wrote test five, that it would pass? So I'm going to skip test five. So test, I'm going to skip five and go straight to six. Is six going to pass? You think that algorithm that we just implemented works for six? No. And what's the assert? Obviously, you've seen it before. <laughs> Whoa. Five worked, six worked. Guess what? We are starting to, there's something happening here. That was a surprise. We thought that wasn't going to work. 
five work, six work? Is seven going to work? Same as two. So we're going to skip it. That one's too obvious. It's same as two and five. So we're going to skip it. So our next test is going to be eight. Is eight going to pass? If you can't, if you can't immediately answer, we need to write that test. Okay, those two teams, stickers on the line for this one. Let's get that implemented. Somebody help them out. I want those guys to get their stickers. So somebody, somebody help them. You know what the assert looks like. I'm helping by solving No, I'd go sit over there with them. Except you guys think. <laughs> All right, so... Predict this test for me. Oh, this is the pass. So they got a chance. Why don't you help them? Make your table pass. Get your table of stickers, Jonathan. If you get your tables of stickers, you're getting sticker. <laughs> help your table out. Jeff's over there. These guys just have to be done. They're facing the wrong way, so they're sort of got to do something. I know, I can't believe you're sitting. All right, woohoo! We're moving on. Richard, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get them their sticker. All right, so this next test, you know what it looks like? Does this test pass or fail? It fails. Good call. And what's the algorithm change? Oh. Richard, are we getting their stickers? Ah, oh, you're got that. See that? Look at that. It takes an outside, a little bit of outside help, and they're going to have their stickers in no time at all. <laughs> See, that's perfect. Outside help sometimes motivates the team to get working. Change it themselves. All right. First time, this first table to get done. We're moving on to the next one. Yeah, we're not. The refactor's after lunch. We do the factor. I think we've run out. Okay, so you guys are done. All right, so what's the what what makes this pass? That's a tough one. There's a big change. So there's a, there's a mistake almost everybody makes because there's no curly braces. Notice this is outside of that while loop. Don't accidentally slip it in there. You'll get an endless loop. You probably already noticed that. OK. I made that exact mistake. <laughs> Woo Guess what? This team got their stickers. Jonathan help? No. Okay, no stick no stickers for you. Okay, so break time. Come back.